I'm Corbett Wall with DV Auction here with your feeder flash for Thursday, May the 7th, where awareness continues to grow and it's it's at the highest level that I've ever known it as to what's going on in this industry, how your packers are gouging the consumers, how they're manipulating uh, the market for the fed cattle that they're purchasing, that they're making in ex excess of two thousand dollars a head on and uh, it, it's as bad as it's ever been but the awareness is, is finally starting to come around. Several weeks ago when we first started getting into this coronavirus deal uh, you heard your, your leaders of the country uh, complimenting your, your, uh, your, your food companies uh, which include your big four packers and saying what a good job they're doing feeding everybody and, and not that they're down on them now but it's starting to come out on, uh, on how much uh, advantage they're taking of this crisis. Uh, we had several, uh, many uh, attorneys of general uh, call for uh, investigation. We've had several calls for investigation. Finally, on Wednesday afternoon, Trump called for the DOJ to do an investigation on antitrust laws that the Packers are breaking uh, against your cattle feeders. And uh, when Trump says something, stuff's going to start happening. The fur will start flying now. And the word had gotten out uh, into your, your cattle trade. And even though your Fed Cattle Exchange uh, wasn't uh, too great there with some $95 trade, uh, we saw in the afternoon in your feedlots that uh, we saw, you know, one uh, regional packer uh, start to start buying cattle on a dress basis at $180. That'd be 20 bucks higher uh, than last week's top. Uh, we saw your your uh, another packer start buying in the Southern Plains at $110 uh, when we thought that the market had been established at 95. So a full 15 bucks over that, and and sure five bucks over your top of last week. So it's starting to come around now. We got people calling in uh, to talk radio. We got uh, interviews going on in big newspapers not just trade publications but a lot of that too uh, I've done several uh, webinars and, and uh, interviews for different uh, publications myself a lot of other people been doing it and just producers calling in and doing that and uh, well now people are starting to see what's going on we've got a, uh, we've got time to make some hay right here we can get something done uh, we've got a lot of uh, proposals that are in front of us uh, some of them bailout deals, uh, some of them pushes to get legislation done, uh, and a lot of things are going on out there. We've, uh, we've seen that uh, the, they've got a proposed uh, set-aside program there, and uh, that would be a deal for these backed-up cattle uh, that you could put them into a program. It's a 75-day program, which is, is a pretty long time. Uh, they wouldn't have to to necessarily be in there but if you if you got them sold if you were able to get those cattle to harvest before that then you would get out otherwise you'd have to stay in for 75 days uh, but it would last uh, the program would last until we get back to 95 percent capacity it's similar to the program that uh, Canada had uh, after the mad cow breakout up there and when they were just really reeling and I don't know as bad as it's gotten here now I still don't think it's as bad as, as what the the mad cow did to your Canadian cattle feeders and your Canadian cattle producers up there but it was really really bad but we're in a bad one here now but uh, th this, uh, this set aside program would basically have your cattle feeders put those cattle that, that are harvest ready uh, put them in just kind of a, a maintenance ration just put them in kind of a holding pattern uh, to maintain their weight, uh, you know, it wasn't going to bother the cattle at all. It, it's sure not uh, uh, bothering their welfare or anything, but the, the cattle would just eat like you and I do. We don't just continue to eat and eat and eat until we're uh, finished and obese. Well, some of us do, I guess, but uh, just enough to, to get by uh, for the days and then and, and kind of hold their weight together. Uh, I'm not sure if it would hold their grade together. Uh, if you don't continue to push those cattle, a lot of times the, the quality grade kind of falls away but uh, still uh, it would pay your, your cattle feeders two dollars and ninety cents a head a day uh, the program could cost us from uh, as much as 131 million to as much as 326 million I'm not sure where that money is going to come from uh, we have we've just really been 
bleeding this turnip called the government uh, through this uh, COVID-19 deal. And I don't know, uh, with our uh, the, the whole world we're in already, as far as our government, I don't realize how we're ever going to start to pay that back. Our deficit is just continues to grow. And, and a lot of these outfits think that uh, the government just has endless supplies of money, and maybe they do. You know, it, it's uh, this money seems to be virtual anyway. Where's all the money that everybody's lost in, in the stock market? Uh, they've lost in, in everything that's happened since this crisis broke out. Somebody ought to have it, but it doesn't seem like anybody has it. Now, I know the Packers have a lot of money because we see what kind of millions that they're making in each facility that they have each day. Uh, what they're doing with that money, we don't know. But, uh, you know, it just seems like that the money is just kind of a virtual thing anymore and kind of goes along with Bitcoin and, and all these things that I don't really understand. But uh, uh, where, where the actual cash money is, I'm not sure. Uh, I was talking to some contacts of mine, uh, different ones than I normally talk to, and we were talking about the, the deal with these plants and why we're not able to keep them open. Uh, Secretary Sonny Perdue said that he thought that maybe your plants would, would be back up and going when they were talking about this DOJ investigation. He thought a week to 10 days. I think he's pretty optimistic there. I don't know if we're going to be able to do it. Uh, I think it has as much or more to do with uh, your attitudes of your workers now. And, you know, and we hate to say that, and gosh almighty, we sure don't want to hurt anybody's feelings here, but you know, most of all your workers in there are, uh, are either ethnic or, or foreign that, that work in those plants there. And the way that they're set up, you know, if you guys haven't been in them, they'll speak as many as 25 or 30 different languages in a plant. And it's, it's people from all over this globe that come in to do that kind of work because uh, many of us Native Americans, uh, not being Indians, but most of us uh, that are, that are uh, from America and, and grew up here and been several uh, generations here, don't want to do that kind of work. And so we bring people in that will. And, uh, and even though in places like uh, St. Joe, Missouri, where I used to work out of for many, many years, they brought that big hog plant into there, they tried to give uh, the, the next generation of those workers that worked in the Swift and Armor plants uh, back in the, in the, you know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, uh, a lot of their kids really haven't kept a job, uh, you know, since then. And they're still living in the houses that their parents left to them right there on the south side of St. Joe. They gave those workers every opportunity to work there uh, and talking to some of the management of that plant right after they got going, they said they were, you know, they were 60% or more, uh, you know, Caucasian, local uh, people, second generation plant workers. And within just weeks, uh, most of them had all quit or quit coming to work. So, so these, these people they've got working in the plants typically are very trustworthy and, and pretty good workers and they come with skills. But uh, they, they've kind of turned sour on us here lately. And some of it's due to the fear of the, of the COVID and, and some of it, uh, uh, the unions are, are passing on, uh, uh, you know, telling them, you know, well, uh, these guys are, are, are taking advantage of you. You know, they're not respecting your health and safety and all this kind of thing. And it's starting to turn their attitudes a little bit. You know, we've heard stories tell of, uh, of these plant workers whenever they're off work uh, getting as, as close as they possibly can and even spitting on each other uh, you know because they figure that they're uh, they, they hear that uh, some of these uh, coronavirus uh, positives uh, are asymptomatic and they figure well you know I'm going to get uh, all this extra money here and I can stay home and I won't have to go to work doing all that another big thing that's happening in these plants is they'll usually have some elder uh, I want to say elder statesmen. I don't know if that's the right word, but they have some some older people in there that know all the jobs uh, on a certain uh, certain uh, area of the plant there, and they speak the languages of these plant workers in there because many of them don't speak English, and if they do, it's broken English. But uh, those those people are very highly skilled, and they basically take care of a lot of the training. Uh, that has to be done for these uh, for these plants uh, in specific jobs and it's very skilled detailed labor there 
But those people are very, very important to these plants. And some of these guys have, uh, or gals have a little bit of age on them and your plants have been wanting uh, to preserve them and take care of them. And then they, uh, they think they might be of high risk. So they've been sending them home. Well, without those guys uh, riding trail over the rest of the workers, uh, a lot of these workers have kind of gone rogue. And, uh, you know, we hear, we hear about people, uh, you always got a high-headed one in the herd, you know, jumping up and, and saying that, uh, you know, hey, you know, we're getting taken advantage of here. Let's all walk. And, and that's happened several times. And that's why they can't keep these plants going. Uh, now, with the, uh, the act that President Trump put forth there, the old wartime act there, uh, they are forfeiting a lot of their benefits. And, and there's not, uh, the, the unions are not going to be able to take advantage of the litigation that they might be able to take advantage of because it, it's been deemed essential infrastructure. So uh, hopefully we can kind of get things calmed down a little bit here. You know, we talk about how much uh, positive outbreaks we have in these plants. It's just because they've done a whole lot of testing in there. You know, we've got distribution centers that have stayed open uh, so all of us can sit at home and order stuff over the internet and have it dropped off at our front door. You know, all those distribution centers are still running. Uh, you know, what if we rolled in there, set up a triage unit and started testing every person that worked in there? You'd think, oh my gosh, we've got another hot spot, another outbreak. Exactly. You know, if, if we tested everybody in this country, there's no telling what percent have already had this deal, didn't even know that they had it, were asymptomatic or whatever. But uh, anyway, I think that's what we're facing as much as anything. And, and I, think, I think a lot of people just kind of dance around that issue, but that is definitely going on. And I think a lot of you guys uh, probably figured that's what's going on. But uh, I heard it from uh, some of the horses' mouths there on Wednesday. But, uh, you know, I talked about a lot of movements there. We're proud of the 3014 movement here, and that's, that's the fight that I've decided to take on here. Uh, not that I haven't taken my licks over the deal, but, uh, you know, we're, we're moving forward with that. We got some good news here middle of the week. Uh, we think we've got some traction on this deal. We're going to be doing a Facebook Live and, and a Zoom meeting on Friday, uh, sponsored by U.S. Cattlemen's Association. Those of you that have signed on to the sign-on letter in support of the 3014 movement, uh, it will be emailed to you in the email that you provided there when you signed up, an invitation to come to that. If you guys uh, want, still want to sign on and, and you guys, you know, I've told you a hundred times how to get on and sign on or how do I get on the sign-on letter? I, I can't find it. Okay, if you're watching this video right now on social media, it took you to nationalbeefwire.com. Okay, if, as soon as you get done watching this video, right below where I'm speaking, there's a, there's a sign, a banner, there's a picture right under there that says 3014 Save the Industry. If you will click right there, it will take you to that sign-on letter, and then, uh, you know, a monkey could fill it out. It's got four empty cells there. You enter the information it asks for. You click Submit. You're done. And, and we appreciate it. And, but, uh, you know, uh, if, if, if you're watching this video, you've got enough uh, computer literacy to get that 3014 deal signed on. But we're getting some traction. We're doing a, a good job here. Uh, uh, something's going to happen, guys. It may not be exactly as what we're asking. Uh, they, may be, uh, they may start out asking for more than 30%, which, I, I, you know, we kind of figured that. But we've been calling it from the get-go 30% minimum. It, it's a floor. It's not a ceiling. So we're, we're not going to take less than 30. If, if we could get more than 30, sure, we would take that. But I feel comfortable pushing the 30 because that's where I feel uh, comfortable that, that we could continue on with the industry as we know it. We wouldn't be in reinventing the wheel and we wouldn't d disrupt things any more than we have to and help them a whole, whole lot. And maybe down the road we could try to get more. But, uh, you know, I, I mentioned uh, the last couple of visits uh, about Dr. Kuntz's letter that uh, US or uh, NCBA uh, published there. Uh, you know, and he was talking in reference of, of how his research was being used and mentioned in there that the, the a mandate 
of any kind, especially this 3014 deal, would cost the industry millions and millions and millions of dollars. Well, how do they arrive at that? Well, they figure, well, all these, these formula trades that, that are out there, you know, they're, 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 they're off the base price. And, and the whole reason we're saying this is because the base price doesn't have any, any weight to it because there's no leverage in the negotiated trade. That's why we need to set a minimum mandated level of negotiated trade. It would give us a much stronger uh, cash price. And then your formula traders would get to enjoy that. They would get to enjoy that stronger base price. And then it would trickle down to the entire industry all the way down to your cow calf producers. But, you know, so many of these formula traders, they, they, they're, they're so confident and they, they feel so proud of themselves each week that they plus the market. I plus the market. You know, plus the market, $7 on these cattle. I plus the market. They're always plusing the market. Well, when you've got a weak ass market like we've had here for the last several years, uh, where the Packers are taking advantage. Uh, if they do uh, give some of these cash sellers a bid early in the week, they've either got to take it or they don't get bid back again. There's no leverage, uh, there's no uh, competition in it, and there's no price discovery. And that's what we're talking about. So if you're plus in a piss poor market, what have you really done? Not a whole lot, you know. So so the, the, the costs of millions and millions uh, is is the uh, the uh, premiums that they see and the premiums that they're getting are mostly just to guarantee these packers uh, that they'll have their needs filled. So that's the millions of dollars that uh, the industry is supposedly going to miss out on. I think if we had a competitive market and you had these uh, these bigger plants out there, some of them haven't bought any cash cattle to speak of in years. Other ones uh, just buy their, their favorite deals and they don't push very hard. If you saw these packers out, uh, you know, coming to your fat cattle auction markets, getting on your online fat cattle market, talking to your cooperative marketing uh, agencies there, trying to get something done, trying to get some cattle to fulfill uh, their, their need for 30%. Then you're going to start to see a little demand return to your fed cattle arena. Then we're going to start seeing uh, some weight to that fat cattle price each week that's so important to the whole industry. Then if you plus the market then, then you might have something to talk about. But, uh, but saying that the, the, the mandated 3014 is going to cost the industry millions and millions of dollars, that's bullshit. Let's talk about the board for Wednesday. June live cattle futures up the limit. Three dollars, eighty-nine forty-seven, uh, and I think a lot of it had to do with this DOJ investigation. I've talked to people that's had uh, some of DOJ calling around. They're calling some of the fat cattle auctions. They're asking uh, which packers are, are uh, participating in this. What's going on? What are you seeing out there? Do you think this deal's on the up and up? Is twenty-two hundred dollars per head a little too much to be making on something that only costs thirteen hundred dollars per head? Yeah, maybe. What about August live cattle futures up three dollars? Uh, up the limit on them at 95.45. You go on out from there, and all your upfronts were sharply higher, from 270 to three dollar limit there. May feeder cattle up the four and a half dollar limit, 124.10. August also up the limit, four and a half dollars at 132.75. Uh, and you go on out from there, and they were all up from four dollars to four and a half dollars. So banner day on on your board. We'll see if it sticks or not. And then your fat cattle trade, I mentioned earlier, it just went gangbusters as, as these packers come out and, and try to pretend that, that they're the only ones that are kind of trying to be honest here. Uh, yeah, right, it might be a little bit late here, but uh, as these, uh, as these uh, investigators are coming around and the heat's starting to get a little bit warmer, they're playing hot foot with these guys and then the soles of their boots are, are starting to turn red. But the Southern Plains established their market at 110. We thought that that little trickle of trade that started on the Fed Cal Exchange at 95 was the established market, but no, $110. Now they're not buying a whole lot because they're not being able to get uh, as many, near as many as they want uh, or anywhere near close to full capacity harvested, but still, uh, we're establishing the market. Uh, some confirmed sales out of Iowa, 2,400 head. They ranged dress sales in Iowa from $150 to $180 just on Wednesday. 
you think this market ain't screwed up but uh, we saw your uh, your Iowa premium plant there come in and and they based their sales at hundred and eighty dollars that that's where they uh, were gonna make their buy this week and and you wouldn't think that one of those regionals which you know really is is for the most part up and up uh, was getting too much heat but they definitely wanted to come way out front and give $180 uh, because they got a little bit of scruples to them. How about Nebraska? 3,700 head confirmed on Wednesday and that's pretty good trade there. Uh, just a little bit of live sales at $95 and then dress sales in Nebraska ranging from 145 all the way to 180. Kansas and Texas had trade. Kansas 3,400 head. Uh, they had that little bit of 95 there early and then all the rest of it at 110. And then uh, Texas also the same way from 95 all the way to 110. And the top price there mostly uh, was a floor set by National. And, and they were trying to put good faith out there. But box beef cutout values soared once again every day 20 to 30 bucks higher, 20 to 30 bucks higher. And then just continue to, to launch towards the stratosphere. Choice cuts on Wednesday afternoon, 449.18 up another $20.19. Selects $431.96 up $21.25. Your choice select spread $17.22 and another pretty good movement for one day especially when you're not harvesting a whole lot of 110 loads of cuts, grinds, and trimmings and yes your packers are all making squarely uh, well over $2,000 a head on every one of these things that they can get through the plant. Uh, your slaughter uh, it's 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 better than last week and we and we kind of thought coming into this week that it might be worse than last week last week was bad we only had 425,000 uh, but what it's a little bit better this week 237,000 there through Wednesday that's up 16,000 uh, you know compared to uh, last week but still you know well over a hundred thousand lot lighter than the same week a year ago Let's talk about your feeder cattle market your real-time index on DV auction late on Wednesday up a dollar eighty eight as the board launched uh, your, your buyers got more aggressive and then when word come in later in the afternoon about what was going on in the fat cattle arena they really got hungry but RTI sitting at 123.58 late Wednesday like I said up a buck eighty eight some of your big sales and, and they were good ones and it's good to see OKC West look out on a Wednesday and have a, a up the market uh, board and a stronger fat cattle market They had a big run 13,300 head for the two day sale of course most of them were on the Wednesday uh, portion of the sale just calves on Tuesday but Wednesday had a big run of feeder cattle there most of them coming off graze out wheat feeder steers four to eight bucks higher with spots as much as ten dollars higher feeder heifers one to five dollars higher uh, the calves uh, on Tuesday just uh, not a really good test of them but uh, kind of a lower undertone on the ones that were there but look at this automated market report from DV auction here on cattle market central and uh, this is just for the Wednesday sale so don't pay attention too much to the calf weights but uh, if you look at, at the best tested uh, weights there you can see how much higher they were and I guarantee you uh, the market reporters there nailed the trend on it because and sometimes when things are wild like that it's really hard to jump out there and call the trend on there but you can see on these weighted average prices compared to the the same sale a week ago that uh, you know they, they were fully as much higher as what they called them but look at your six weight steers there 644 head of them average 642 in El Reno at 136.61 for the weighted average price and that's six bucks higher on the weighted average than a week ago how about your seven weight steers 1631 head of them average 743 at 130.28 and that was straight up 10 bucks higher 2,074 head of the eight weight steers averaged 853 at 117.14 that was up seven dollars and 1,851 head of nine weight steers at OKC West in El Reno, Oklahoma. They averaged 9.44 at 108.94, and that was sure enough five bucks higher. So great sale there in El Reno for those guys. Winter livestock, Dodge City, Kansas had a lighter run this week, and I bet they wish they had more there. But 2,000 head there for them. Feeder steers two to four bucks higher. Uh, the rest of your uh, classes were not well tested 
Uh, your your feeder heifers had had a higher undertone, but not a good test on them. Heifer calves a lower undertone, and just not enough steer calves to really tell uh, what was going on. Some individual quotes that I pulled out for you off of Cattle Market Central. There, uh, one of our newest sale barns that we're broadcasting on DV Auction is Green City Livestock Marketing in Green City, Missouri. Fifty head, six hundred and sixteen pound steers bring one hundred and fifty one seventy five. Wow. Uh, Stockman's Livestock Market, Yankton, South Dakota. Uh, they had a heck of a good sale there. And, you know, I had a guy send me this quote as soon as it happened. I had a guy call me that it was bidding over the phone trying to get these cattle bought. He was flustered and frustrated because he didn't get them bought. But uh, this particular load of cattle there, it is a big load like they have up there in South Dakota. Uh, he, th this one brought about some attention a long ways from that sale barn, but 80 head of 800 pound all natural steers bring 141.50 in Yankton, South Dakota, guys. But the best quote I saw on straight up commodity cattle come out of Cherokee Sales Company in Cherokee, Oklahoma. Jared Herman and, and company there, 71 head, 810 pound steers, 131 bucks. And that's your feeder flash for Thursday.